What is up all you gearheads and crazy quad riders? This is Guess Who Gur. If you love riding as much as I do, you know that when you go out to ride, you don't want to be stuck on the side of the trail. These are going to be my top five things that I would do to my four-wheeler because I have been stuck on the side of the trails and it is not fun. First thing I'm gonna do is change the oil. To change your oil, it's really only about 20 bucks depending on the oil you use. God dang, jeez. Oil doesn't really look too bad. Didn't have any leaks over the winter. Oh yeah, that's nice. And you can see, I uh, really don't have a whole lot of sludge on there. You know why? Because I changed my oil. That is all cleaned up and we are just about done. That all cleaned up. Get her snug. Perfect. Just get rid of all that old oil. Now, if you don't have a motorcycle jack or ATV jack, I would highly recommend getting one, especially if you're gonna be doing your own maintenance. Okay guys, this next step is perhaps the most important of all five of these steps. So this is gonna be inspecting your chain for wear and also your sprockets. This is called chain whack. It's when your chain breaks and whacks the case. It can cause more damage than this actually has right here. The front sprocket really does not look terrible. Um, this is an old chain. This is the one that I got with my four-wheeler. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this. Very easy to look over this and just think because if it ain't broke, it don't fix it. That's not the case with chains. This can ruin your day out on the trail. New chain is a little bit too long, so I am going to mark this and cut that right off. Swap out my glasses for some safety ones. Before I put that chain back on, I'm just going to wipe my sprocket off, get any dirt or sand off of here. And it was actually a good idea to take that off because you can see this is actually pretty loose. This is exactly why we do maintenance on our vehicles, man. No. Brand new chain. You saw how important it is to just check everything out, you know, wiggle things while you're looking around. All right, on to step three, now that we have the new chain and the oil changed, it's gonna be checking the compression and that involves taking off the spark plug boots, removing the spark plugs, putting up a compression tester. And this is basically je just checking the health of your top end. Your reeds can be cracked in these. If it does have low compression, your rings inside the pistons could be failing. Things break down. It is a machine after all. So the process is pretty easy. I just go in here. Take my plugs out. So it's good to just have a look at these. Looking pretty good. Pop this in right where the spark plugs go. Get that all the way seated. Pop this in. We're gonna kick this over with the throttle wide open. Very important, always do this at full throttle. I'm testing the left cylinder right now. We're just going to kick it over. Pretty much the same as it was last year, which is really awesome. 190, somewhere around in there. It's holding pressure good too, that's really nice. That's what you wanna see. All right, we've got this switched over to the other side. So let's check the compression. Let's see what we got here. Right side, just a tad bit higher, sitting right at just under 200. The other side was at 190, this is at 200. It's within tolerance, so. We're gonna call that good. This is a nice, healthy, strong motor. Uh, I've only ran this for one year with the 421 build that I put on here, and I'm pretty impressed. I have not done a compression test at all since I put it together. I mean, you know, obviously when I put it together, I did that, but I have not done one since, and I'm happy to see that I built a, a good motor. That is very vital, especially if you're going to be competitive. I like to go out to the dunes, and I like to whip some ass, so this is good to see. I like, I like seeing good compression. Also, uh, another thing, I'm going to put some new spark plugs in there. Yeah, these are, uh, we're gonna try these out and we're actually gonna gap these properly. These are both at 
1.030. But yeah, these both look pretty decent. I'm just gonna run these right at 30. Gap your plugs or get gapped, bud. All right, guys, now that you have your spark plugs properly gapped and you are ready for the races, the next step is gonna be making sure you can stop at the end of the drag strip. All right, let's take a look at these. So brake pads are actually looking pretty good, releasing properly. Brake pads on the side are looking good also. Rotor's looking decent. Let's see if I can get a little test here. Yep, they stop properly. Rotor is not all grooved. It's nice and tight. All right, last but not least is greasing your fittings. I would recommend greasing once, if not twice a year. Um, it's very important everything gets lubricated in here or it can be very expensive to start replacing your suspension components. I only have a few on here. Normally you'd have some on your front end on a Banshee, but I have aftermarket. I have one grease fitting here, another one here, one more right there. That is how I get my four wheeler ready for the season. Obviously there's some more things you could do. There's just endless amounts of things that can possibly go wrong, but these five things should at least cure you from a major catastrophe on the side of the trail. If you learned something, please go down, like, and subscribe, post a comment. Check this beauty out, man. Golly, just got my garage all put together. Got a nice little studio here for you guys. Do not neglect your four-wheeler and you will have a lot of fun this summer. We will see you next time.